this warming is enough to bring about the raft of effects we call climate change. Highest ever recorded temperature in the Arctic. I think it's definitely a crisis. Burning hotter, faster, and more explosive than ever before. I've got grandchildren, and I'm very concerned about their future. Hundreds more are still missing after the worst flooding in parts of Western Europe. So concerned about the issue. We need a unified national response. Hi everyone, it's Natasha Fortain, and I am in Yorkshire. I'm participating in a walk called Walk to COP26, which involves myself and other people walking from London to Glasgow for COP26. Which is a conference of governments all over the world coming together to talk about climate change and help to respond to the global emergency. necessarily call myself a climate change activist really just consider myself to be a citizen and i want to be part of the solution i'm in the, the process of educating myself about the emergency of climate change i'm hoping that with individuals like you and me we can shed the light on that emergency and together we can make a change Think global but act local. So it's, it's great to sit on your sofa and think this something should be done. But, you know, maybe a good idea to get up off your sofa and do something about it yourself, even in a small way. I actually have, I don't want to call it reparation quite, but, you know, I do have to do something to make amends for my indifference. You know, climate change has been well understood for decades, but it's not something that I pursued. And it is something now that I am increasingly knowledgeable about and I want to make good in a small way. We live in a system, a complex system, you know, the solution to something like climate change requires many parts of that system to work together. But of course, the biggest organisations have a massive role to play. And of course, governments do as well. There's a lot more that we can be doing in our communities. There's a lot more than different kinds of organisations can be doing. And the reality is, to get to a net zero target requires all of us. Net zero means zero. So COP is a climate change summit. Where the nations come together and recommit to their nationally determined contributions to reducing their carbon emissions. We now know that something needs to be done and we know when that needs to be done by. So this is why we're starting to see more and more pressure on them. And so, yes, there is frustration, but of course, what we need to do obviously is work together to make sure that frustration doesn't exist and we move beyond that towards action. I wanted to help with like-minded people who actually care about the environment and about the planet. So through my search, I got in touch with Sam Baker, who was the person behind the idea of the work. So I first heard about Walk to Cop through another trustee at Carbon Copy and said that what Sam was trying to do and what we do as a charity fitted really nicely together and that we should get in touch. So it was Sam Baker who led the project and he and I were working on this a, a separate climate project together and he raised it and immediately I said yes, yes I'd like to, to participate. I'm not quite sure if he was actually inviting me or just telling me about the concept. <laughs> He's got very passionate about us and uh, his, uh, his interest and passion is infectious. What inspired you to take this specific action of walking from London to Glasgow for 26 days? I wanted to spend an extended amount of time interacting both with nature, but also different types of people with different hats on and having different perspectives. We're bringing people together across sectors. Uh, so this is government. Add to that a focus on business. We wanted to add to that sort of climate activist and civil society. 
we want to add to that students. Having them all talk together, find common strands, find ways that they can work together. And through that process, we very much hope to make a difference. The feeling I had when we finally took off was relief, relief that it was actually happening. We had a very, very warm welcome at Camden and we started our work. For me, it was, it was fantastic. It was, this is happening, this is exciting. And we were just raring to go. Beginning on your way, we would like to share a traveller's blessing with you. Know that you carry the hopes and wishes and gratitude of many people and that those that hope those hopes and wishes and gratitude will grow as you go along the road you're gonna walk 500 miles and you and so we started there and went on out of london to st albans where we held our first event i'm mean, probably the highlight for me it was just talking about the importance of communicating this to normalize it as a topic of conversation. And what was exciting for me was to watch this unfold, to realize that people were meeting each other, who, but people who didn't, they didn't know, sharing opinions on this critical topic. And it just confirmed that, you know, what we were about to do during that whole trip was the right thing. I've been asked what it is that anyone can do. I think the thing about fighting the climate emergency is we've all got to do our bit. None of us do enough, but we've got to spread this movement. COP26 is not going to succeed if we rely upon governments alone. It will only succeed if the people are demanding success. As a school, we've come up with a strategy to be more eco-friendly and to hopefully be carbon neutral by 2030. Last year, we planted 800 trees. We did that because it's a great way to be eco-friendly for the future. So yeah, we're really excited to do more things like that as a school and as a collective community. The last four days were quite challenging, but um, it was also very enjoyable. First of all, to be with the team, the good spirit, uh, to meet the other people who are also encouraging us. One of the initiatives that someone shared with us was back in Milton Keynes, I say back, but it was only yesterday. There's this amazing organization called Food Connect. Hi, I'm Helen Innes, I'm the project coordinator for Food Connect. We're a zero emissions food redistribution service currently operating in the Milton Keynes. The food waste we redistributed in the first six months actually equates to 36 tonnes of carbon and we've saved 1.7 tonnes of carbon by using our amazing electric fleet. And so now currently we help collect around five tonnes of food a week and that helps families all over Milton Keynes. So we wanted to visit different projects, which we felt you know, exemplified local initiatives. Because we all get motivated by stories. In many ways, that's more motivating and it connects with us uh, more than just the bare facts. Because climate action has always been more than just uh, emissions reductions. And I think for me, one of the things that I rediscovered is that climate action is really about community, uh, care, you know, repair, renewal. It's those kinds of qualities that we heard time and again. The Eco Village is a collection of uh, small independent businesses uh, with sustainability at their heart. We also have a centre for education, so things from how to compost to really healthy food, healthy eating cookery courses. And that really is at the core of what we do at the Eco Village. We want to promote all of the ways that you can have a lower impact through what you eat and what you do, but in an accessible way. So the next one was uh, Coventry. That brought different people from different business areas in a panel forum, and they discussed what they were doing as profession towards fighting climate change and shed a light of taking action right now. 
One of the things that I really liked about our walk is that we had other members join the walking team for various sections. You know, all of the people who came had rich stories. All of the people were exciting people to talk about. They all had their own inspirational stories. And so uh, having them join just kept our morale going in a sense. And why are you joining the Walk to Cop 26 team? To do something active to raise awareness for climate change and support my dad. I think it's definitely a crisis. And I think as a society, we all need to do more to actively help prevent it from getting any worse. So I'm on the walk because I feel that we will do what we can to make a difference. And walking in this way in order to talk to people about climate emergency. You know, it's really, really important because we can't act urgently without everybody really being aware of what the situation is and being able to make choices. Morecambe was a highlight. You know, there were some fairly um, hotly debated local topics as well. Of course, we didn't manage to address any of the big hairy issues in the two hours that we worked together with everybody and talked. But at least you could see the airing of that. And from my perspective, seeing that, hearing that, and trying to reflect on the importance of a good inclusive process to try and resolve those trade-offs was really, really important. So for me, um, I'm really passionate about all of us accessing our agency. So we established Lancaster Youth for Environment and started the school strikes and the campaigning. I'd say that that first achievement was we helped get the council to declare a climate emergency. We then did, over the space of about a year, monthly school strikes. So um, we'd have hundreds of, of students, of young people, people in the town come to these strikes calling for climate action. And then we've also done things like litter picking and tree planting and, and community kind of cohesion events. I think that demonstrated really how bringing people together can create some sort of uh, pressure, some sort of impetus to, to get things done. I joined the team on Friday at the event in Morecambe, which was amazing, amazing local community event. And then I had the chance to walk with the team all day yesterday on Saturday in the rain and the mud. Also having seen the event in Morecambe, you know, meeting people in local projects, local schools, highlighting the amazing things that are happening locally for change, I think there's definitely a point in, uh, in, in the walk that you're doing. The next big event was Moffat. It was just this fantastic mix of people. And it was lively and the speakers were great. The questions were fantastic. And, and afterwards, I got the email, and this, this really sort of meant a lot to me, which was an email which said that was probably the, the best conversation they'd had in and around climate change in the town, because it brought together people perhaps didn't normally speak together, there was enough time, there was energy. And so that for me was massively gratifying. And we're not saying it's gratifying because we did that, but we contributed to it happening. We are going through the water, it's a flooded Scotland we're talking about. I think overall, certainly Scotland was a challenge because the weather turned against us. And, you know, you're higher, you're in ski, you're further north, the rain's coming down hard, it doesn't stop. When we got to Scotland, we generally had to walk on pretty busy roads. And so water would be splashed all over you and you would do that for a solid five or six hours. We had all sorts of problems, ankle, sheen, and uh, we had to deal with them, you know, as we went along. Keep the speed up. Yeah. Go, 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 hey, go, 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 go. hey. I wanted to give up one day when we were walking in Scotland uh, across peatlands and I started crying as I was walking because I was like, I do not want to be here anymore. The wind is beating down on, at me. The rain is coming really hard. So we keep pushing. And two hours later, there's sunshine and a rainbow. And I think that's exactly the climate journey. It might be uh, challenging, but 
it will be challenging for a short time, but eventually we will get somewhere. We're doing this for the cause of climate change. We're doing this to meet as many people as possible. And I didn't want to miss any conversation on the way. Mm. And that was um, what mostly kept me going. If it had been nothing more than a 500 mile walk, that would have felt very different. But because there was so much else to do. And we had met so many fantastic people that I felt like they were on the journey with us and that completing the journey, it wasn't about me anymore. It was about all of the, the people that were there, all of their hopes also. I'm doing this uh, really because I'm very passionately keen to see changes in the climate change and also partly because I want to be in solidarity with so many people who are you know, going to Glasgow in order to influence the decision makers. Being born on the slopes of Mount Kilimanjaro and uh, seeing how the glacier has been melting, it's been um, a clear sign that things are going from bad to worse and something's got to be done hey guys it's insanely beautiful insanely beautiful awesome. i didn't really know england particularly well and i didn't know scotland particularly well before this and now i've walked all the way there and i realize how incredibly beautiful this country is. I think the experiences of the walk and the different kinds of landscapes and scenery was very inspiring. It confirmed to us that there were lots of things that we need to uh, protect. And it made me sad in a way because I, I realized that lots of people, the children now, the children of the future, they're not going to be able to take walks in nature unless we do something quickly. Along the way, I joined a few school assemblies and career day conversations. Yeah, what was inspiring? It was, they were on it, they were engaged, they were enthusiastic, and we've got to take that away. That's what we want to be. And all of their questions were about, how do I have an impact? And so we spoke a lot about the amazing voice that children have, right? And their ability to influence the people around them. Okay, let's go. Oh, no. <laughs> no, that has a mind of its own, so we're not doing that. Did you get you me almost falling? Did you get me almost falling? Because that's great. So my name's Jessie and I'm a youth climate activist based in Devon in the south of England. I've journeyed all the way up from Devon to here and onto Glasgow to COP. As part of the movement I set up called People Pedal Power, aiming to highlight the messaging that we need more people-led decision-making and more sustainable transport infrastructure. I mean, it was all born out of me struggling to get to COP due to lack of sustainable transport um, and it being so much cheaper to fly and that just seemed wrong to me. So I decided to cycle and make a point out of it and also highlight the need for more diverse voices at COP. So through that we've got a cargo bike which is carrying all our stuff, highlighting that not all big journeys need cars and also highlighting the power of collective action when we all come together. Anybody who's watching this know that these guys are, are pretty amazing <laughs> for going as far as they have with this. So one of the highlights for me was an event that we organized on the penultimate day, just before we walked into Glasgow, called Walk With Us. Wherever you are was our way of bringing people from all over the world, and not just those that we met in the UK on the journey, along with us. And so what it involved was groups of people in cities coming together and walking and then importantly we would all contribute to the planting of trees as we went via an app called atlas go which is this b corp certified company that plants trees for the distance that one walks we had over 150 people use the atlas go app 
and our goal was to plant 5000 trees and now that the challenge is closed we have reached that and then to tune in we had an app which essentially is like a live podcast where you could just listen to what people were talking about and join in and we would have this phenomenal interesting international conversation around uh, climate action and what people were doing locally and it was absolutely fascinating all right see you later everybody see you later. Bye. Bye. We were very happy because it was the final day. But also tinged with some regret. Just the idea of it coming to an end was something that, for me personally, I wasn't necessarily looking forward to. So Father Arbo is a Catholic priest, so he said a little sort of blessing for us. I think he's saying, let it be as well. So that was a nice touch. Living in this world, I mean, there will be an answer, let it be. Or they may be parted, there is still a chance that they will see. There will be an answer. Let it be. Let it be. That was pretty emotional. And then off we went. For me personally, I, I got quiet. And then as we got to Glasgow, it just, it, it hit me. We'd finally gotten to our destination. At the entrance of Strathclyde Union, there's this huge picture of Nelson Mandela. And being South African, for me, it was effectively like getting a big hug from my family and other South Africans. My wife was there, we had friends and family there, and it was just really nice to sit down, order a beer, be amongst friends, and just say, yep, we did it. True to to the rest of the walk, we had a couple of events that we had to organize in Glasgow itself. One was around climate justice, which clearly is a really important aspect to how we can bring uh, everybody along in terms of the transition. A critical topic in how do you make sure that you get proper representation of the communities and the peoples who are impacted by climate change into the climate change decisions. We need everybody on board if we're going to change everything. And therefore we cannot have a situation where we are leaving certain communities or sections of, of society behind. And then the second event that we organized was, was just super interesting because we got together about a dozen different groups that had journeyed in their own way from their starting point to Glasgow. Somebody came with a 20 foot bear that they'd made. Somebody walked in a steel ball, which weighed 160 kilos. Somebody sailed. And so we brought all of them together to talk about their journeys. And again, I think each and every one of them had a really meaningful experience. I think in many ways, this COP is similar to previous ones insofar as we are not moving far enough or fast enough. It just reminds us that, you know, we can't offload this challenge onto any particular institution or organisation and definitely not on COP. So we've all got a role to play. We've all got to get stuck in. I think to change everything, we need everyone. Walk to COP26 taught me that we don't exist in, in, in silos uh, or in isolation. It's really when we come together as a collective that we have the biggest impact. Ideally, we want to put the conversation around the climate crisis and how do we take action at the heart. We do need to have it run across everything that we do to the extent that we no longer label it as taking climate action or addressing the climate crisis. It's just the way we want to live in order to have a cleaner, greener, healthier future. What it taught me is 
more perseverance that the climate change fight is is not going to be solved today or tomorrow but we need to be um, really perseverant and continue our our fight and continue on making real impact my message is do what you can do immediately around you um, lead by example there's lots of small steps you can take there's big steps you can take but just take those steps I think it's quite easy with climate change to get overwhelmed um, with all the things that um, need to happen so I think just focus on the day-to-day -day things that you can do yourself educate themselves on um, what impact they're having how they can change their lifestyle I don't think we can all do everything, so I think it's finding what you can do, what's your favourite thing and what, what impact you can make and then really trying to work in that area. We don't strive to be perfect, but you do what you can and it's simple steps and then you can build on it because actually it's those simple steps that really open your mind to, to other areas that you can make changes. Certainly this is a story that we will continue to tell because it's one that's unfolding all the time and it's one that's getting louder. Yeah, this was the laying down of a little bit of, of soil before you put the seeds into the ground and before you, you know, water the seeds and before you get a harvest. Glasgow is never the destination. We're on a journey and we just need to keep on that journey. We're heading in the right direction. We just need to move faster. So if we can continue to press that, to spread that message, then uh, we will still be pretty much in action, even though we are not fucking anymore. In October 2021, we walked 500 miles, holding hundreds of climate conversations where we brought together a cross-section of society, from students to NGOs, business leaders to government officials. Walking and talking, weaving a web of connections, conversations and relationships across the entire globe. As we travelled, we visited schools and hosted community events, finding open ears, open eyes and open hearts, ready to learn and ready to protect our home. There's no opting out. It's time to dial up the urgency if we're going to turn down the temperature. Walking to COP26 taught us more than we could have anticipated. We learned from others' experiences about physical endurance. There's some cuts that plasters and bandages can't heal. It all comes down to this. Here's what we've learned. Collaboration is vital. We need to work together and it needs to be from all of us, from all backgrounds, from all corners of the world. Everyone needs to be in because this affects everyone. We're no longer talking about the distant future. Climate chaos is the here and now. Fires burning, ice caps melting and temperatures rising. We need to put climate action at the heart of everything we do. So use your voice, use your ears. We need to speak up for what's right and what needs to be done. And we need to act now. COP26 was our destination, but it's not the end of our journey. We walked, talked and listened. Now it's time to act and take on what we learn. It's time for urgency. It's time for big decisions and an even bigger follow through. In COP26, we wanted our world leaders to lead the way, but it has come down to us as a collective, pressing for change, pushing for more. This is just the beginning.